Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. It will be a very special tutorial because um, I will show you how to upgrade your quest data when there is a new release of Solaris. And precisely, Solaris 1.4 was just released today and it will be the occasion to show you how to perform the, the upgrade. Um, the main change of Solaris 1.4 is that um, we have rewritten completely the quest editor. The old quest editor was in Java and the new one is in C++ with Qt. Um, you probably don't care but <laughs> the, there are a lot of new features. Um, additionally to being faster, lighter, and nicer and everything. Um, I will show you this in this video. So let's download the new version. Download Windows 1.4 um, Save Okay, so we can delete the old quest editor. Delete the sample quest even if mm, it doesn't really change much. And delete solaris.exe. Extract everything. Okay, um, so uh, some sample quest is back, compatible with 1.4, and the engine plus the quest editor are now in the Solaris folder. Both both of them are here because the quest editor is also an executable file now, and they share a lot of DLL files. So let's move all of this in the parent directory like before um, except that normally uh, maybe there is a missing DLL here it works on my machine. Anyway, I will fix the I will fix the package. So uh, the so Solaris engine exec um, executable file is now called Solaris Run, and if you run it, it won't start. It will it will tell you that your quest data, so this data directory. It is made for Solaris 1.3 but you are running 1.4. So this is perfectly normal and expected. Instead you can run the quest editor and the quest editor will tell you to perform the upgrade. And um, I had some shortcuts here. I had a shortcut here. So it will be Solaris Run instead. Same here. It's already okay because I did it in the French tutorial before. And this one is okay too. This is a shortcut to the new quest editor with as a parameter um, the, the quest directory. So if I run from here it will open the quest. And the first thing it, the editor tells you is that the format of this quest is outdated, data files will be automatically updated. So let's say OK. And it is successful, so it worked. Anyway, you should make a backup before, because you never know. And here is the tutorial quest in the new quest editor. Um, so now it should work if you run it normally. 
one of the new things is that you can also run the quest from the quest editor. Uh, there are a lot of other new things, but first let's finish the explanation about uh, how to upgrade your quest. Um, this is explained in the in, for example, in the blog post. There are a few incompatibilities in the Lua API. Uh, actually, only one. And everything is explained on the wiki, on the migration guide. So you can find the wiki uh, back to the website. We can find the wiki here in development, no, community wiki. And then migration guide. And this explains how to upgrade your files, your scripts, from one version to another when there are uh, incompatible changes. The only un incompatible change in this version 1.4 is that uh, fonts files are now managed differently. They appear as a resource here, like others like maps, tilesets, sounds, sprites, etc. This was not the case before. Before there was a font that, that file that you you had to edit by hand. Um, fonts, this font file, font list file, no longer exists. Instead, fonts are listed here. Um, Um, and the main incompatibility is that in the font list file there was the possibility to specify a default font. Now this is no longer the case because there, there is no notion of default resource here. So I, um, you should read what's explained here, but you might have to update some script files, or maybe not actually, in the tutorial quest there, there, is, there are no problems because um, all scripts that handle fonts and text like the dialog box, when they create a text surface um, they always specify the font to use So you will have a problem only if you don't specify a font, and this means if you if you were relying on the default font, and that's not a big problem. It is is very very easy to to fix, and uh, of course you will you will see it in your game immediately. If if so, if the text doesn't work, um, why is this a French quest? <laughs> anyway, you can see that the text works, and this one also works. So for this particular version 1.4, there are not a lot of incompatibilities. So anyway, um, to summarize, when you change the version of your data, there are always two steps, upgrade data files and upgrade Lua scripts. Data files are always upgraded automatically by the quest editor. And Lua scripts are programs, so they cannot be updated automatically when there is an incompatible change. So this is why you you should read this. Okay. Um, so I don't know why this is not the correct that mm, the correct quest. It's the French one. By the way, as you can see, the the quest editor automatically made a backup for you. 
but you should always do do backups uh, yourselves. Um, so this is the English quest. Maybe I didn't restore the correct da data when I was preparing this tutorial. So let's try again. Okay, this time I upgraded the English quest and not the French quest. So this new button, run quest, is very experimental for, m for now because we noticed that there are some issues sometimes when... Mm, usually it works well the first time, but the second time you run it in the same instance of quest editor there, there are some problems. For example, the water here was not animated during the first few seconds. If I do it again... So this is probably because the um, Solaris engine was initially mm, designed to run only one quest and stop. And there, there, there are probably some things that persist and should not persist in the code, in the internal code of the engine um, between different run runs. Of course we will fix this uh, as soon as possible. Um, just remember that this button is a new feature but an experimental one. The safe way is to is to run your quests with the, the usual Solaris executable. Um, okay, but there are a lot of new features in the quest editor. Um, there is now... Actually, yeah, there, there are no files anymore to be edited by hand. Except, of course, the code of your script. <laughs> but dialogues are, can now be edited in this user interface which is really great. It was done by Maxis. He helped me a lot for this new editor. He also did the strings editor, even if there is no strings, there are no strings in this project yet. Um, there is a, prop a quest properties editor. It is proposed, uh, it is open the first time you create a quest and you can also access it like this. Right click on your quest um, root element and open properties. This is the th um, this is the content of quest the quest.dat file. Um, and, be and before you had to edit this by hand. Um, what else? A lot of new things in the map editor. Everything is faster. Also, um, there are a lot of keyboard short shortcuts, for example, to show the different layers. One, two, and three. So you can press one, two, three. Uh, you can show the grid or not show the grid. This was possible before, but now you can also set, change the grid size. Changing the grid size is especially useful for sprites. And yes, there is a grid in the sprite editor that's new too. For example, this one, Link. His size is not um, 16 by 16, but I guess 24 by 24. Um, the, the, there, there is an, an options dialog box also. This was added in the um, in the in the last few hours actually, just just before the release. It's also Maxes who did that. 
And in the map editor, um, something you will probably appreciate a lot is that now you can do multi-selection in the tileset view. Like this, for example, you can pick a ho the whole tree and ta -da, add it to the map like this. Also, the resizing of several entities at once was improved. Um, before, it was quite tedious because you had to really uh, be careful of resizing in only one dim dimension. Now, it, it forces you to uh, resize only in one dimension. So either horizontally or vertically, but when you, you resize vertically, it doesn't change horizontally. So you probably understand what I what I said if, if you ever used the multiple resizing feature. Um, the the resource selectors were improved. They are not so great on Windows because they are too short. The height is too short, but it's okay. For example, if you create a chest or any entity that have a sprite field, now the um, the sprite selector shows actually the the icon of the sprite. I think you will probably love that. <laughs> okay, so what else? In the tileset sector, nothing really new except mul multiple selection. For example, uh, you can pick. Oh, there's something here. You can pick all these guys and change a single property for all of them in the at the same time. Um, okay, and also everything is faster. Uh, so I think that's it for the new this uh, quick overview of the new features. Don't hesitate to ask questions. And to summarize this tutorial, so it was about uh, upgrading your quest data from a version to another. What I just said is a general procedure. It's the same. It will be the same for future version, for future versions. And so upgrading data files automatically with the editor, and upgrading Lua scripts when they are incompatibilities in the API. The migration guide will help you. And we can also help you if you have any trouble. There are the comments of this YouTube video. There are the Solaris forums and also the IRC channel. Okay, so that's it for this chapter. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.